So I'm uh, very glad uh, to be in this program again, and I'm very glad to present our today's guest. is David Satter, a journalist and historian. He's the author of books about Russia and the Soviet Union, and as well, he's worked with the Hudson Institute, John Hopkins University. So hello, David. Hello. Glad to be with you. So maybe it uh, will sound some strange, but I would like to start uh, with one quote from one of the latest uh, your interviews, because uh, I think uh, it's uh, very actual for now, this question. So let me just quote you. You said that the late uh, Boris Berezovsky said, if I control state television, I can put a monkey in the Kremlin. And in fact, it's pretty close to what they did do. So I have a question more and more often right now. So how did people with such intellect as Berezovsky and other resourceful businessmen of Russia did not calculate all the risk, all the risks and uh, actually put the weapon into the hands of Putin that killed them? Why didn't they count uh, or predict during all this year they, that when they still were alive not to make him such powerful in Russia? Well, I think they did calculate the risks. I think they understood the risks very well and they didn't care because they cared only about their own uh, wealth, their own self-preservation, their own power. The one mistake that they made was uh, that they didn't realize that Putin would turn on them. Beresovsky in particular was involved in the apartment bombings, either directly or indirectly, because his television station was instrumental in creating the propaganda background for a new war in Chechnya, which was essential in the wake of the apartment bombings to, to, to increase the popularity of Putin. The, I think that where, where Beresovsky made a mistake, and by the way, I think the exact quote is not put a monkey in the Kremlin, put a chimpanzee in the Kremlin. Chimpanzee is different from a monkey, but anyway, the idea is the same. And what they thought was that they could use terror in their own interests and that it would not turn around and threaten them that Putin was such a non-entity that he could be easily controlled. Well, they were disappointed on both counts. Uh, once they resorted to terror themselves in order to preserve their power, preserve their influence and money, they could no longer control the wielder of that terror. And uh, he, uh, he had no further use for them and he turned against them. It's just interesting for me. Uh, you worked uh, in the Russian uh, uh, Moscow Bureau, right, for the international media. For how many years and what period of time you've been there in Moscow? Well, I was Moscow correspondent of the Financial Times of London from 1976 to 82. I visited Kiev many times during that period, and I traveled to Donetsk. I, I, uh, there, were, there are many cities uh, and areas in Ukraine that I'm familiar with, either because I, was, I went there myself or because I, I talked to people who came from there. And then after the Soviet Union collapsed, I was frequently traveling to Russia, and I wrote uh, what was in effect my second book, about, which turned out to be a book about the rise of the Russian criminal state. And uh, I was uh, an advisor to Radio Liberty, and they, they agreed to have me accredited as a correspondent in Moscow in 2013, and then I was expelled, becoming the first, and I think the only, American correspondent expelled from Russia since the fall of the Soviet Union. So I have a long experience with the former Soviet Union, with Ukraine, with Russia. In fact, I've devoted really my my working life to the to the study of these countries. I spoke to, um, a year ago with the one uh, very important person that uh, worked uh, during the uh, first years, uh, first uh, decade, let's say, of Putin. It's William Browder that uh, oh, yeah. created the Magnitsky Act and the financists who worked uh, with the financial system and, and investments in Russia. And he told a lot about his uh, experience during all this year and his believing that uh, it 
might be some kind of democratic uh, uh, reconstruction and reforms in Russia, but then happened what happened. So I wanted to ask you, you as a journalist, you as a writer, and he like an uh, investment person and uh, financial uh, expert, you were observers how the situation was changing year by year, and you had a chance uh, to explain it to the people of your country, to the people of the world, to the politicians as well. So what happened wrong? Why your investigations, his investigations, and people like you and him and other authors uh, didn't got to the ears of politicians, to the uh, people who have influence, to stop the situation of closing all the democratic uh, uh, paths of Russia? Well, first of all, I mean, Bill Browder, whom I know quite well, and I are not in the same category. I mean, he was an early supporter of Putin. Yes. And, uh, you know, I, I, on the contrary, began, said in 1993 that the, the regime is criminal and that Yeltsin is criminal and that Yeltsin and Putin have a, created a single criminal regime. And I said that the apartment bombings in 1999, and I was the first person to say this, uh, were, the, were the work of the Federal Security Service. Uh, this was an act of terror against the Russian people, ordinary people, in order to put Putin in, in power. Without those bombings, you would have no Putin as president. That was the key to his becoming president. But I, in general, I mean, why does the West not understand? And the reason is because uh, they don't want to understand. To understand is it re re requires work, it requires thought, it requires being willing to sacrifice immediate comfort in order to have long-term security. These are things that people are not anxious uh, to adopt. And so I had, I mean, I, Boris Nemtsov, before he was murdered, and I spoke to one of the people who was in charge, was going to become in charge of the reset policy, President Obama. And this was after the murder of Alexander Litvinenko. It was after the murder of Anna Politkovskaya. It was after the invasion of Georgia. And we explained to him that, that Putin is under no circumstance stands as a partner of the U.S. He has to, the, the, that he has to be deterred and controlled and not indulged. But of course, though, that advice fell on deaf ears because the power of cliches is, is, is uh, and, the, and the, the lack of a desire to deal seriously with Russia is very, very strong.